the Tuesday, March 2nd meeting of the Birmingham Parks and Recreation Board. And we would like to start by first um, mention, or welcoming our student representative. I think we have one joining us, um, Allie. And I don't know if, Al, if RJ or Kyle are popping on here, but hi, Allie. Can you hear us, Allie? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? It's nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Can, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you're probably really tired of being on Zoom calls like all of us, right, with school. <laughs> but <laughs> and not to put you on the spot, but you're probably an expert. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Allie. I'm Allie. Um, I'm a junior at Groves High School. And... Great. Well, thank you yep. very much for. Allie, what made you interested to uh, be part of the Birmingham Parks and Rec Board? Um, I've like, been a uh, Birmingham, like lived in Birmingham my, Birmingham my whole life. And I never like, I've been involved in like school and stuff, but um, I wanted to become involved more in like, the study. Excellent. Well, welcome aboard. Thank and thank you. And Allie, just so you know, we, we, anytime you want to contribute, you are a member of our board, so we welcome your participation. So don't feel that your voice is any less than ours. You can't vote, but you definitely can have a say in our discussions. So we would welcome you and in, in, in your perspective. Okay. Great. We will move on to our official roll call. Okay, make sure when I call your name, you please say city and state. Heather Carmona? Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Susan Collins? Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Pam Graham? Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Ross Kaplan? Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Ellie Noble? Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Dominic Police? Present, Birmingham, Michigan. John Rushi? Present, Birmingham, Michigan. RJ Carroll, we know, is not here. Um, Actually, I Ella, think he is. I am. Yeah, I am here. Yeah, I think it's oh, right. Thanks, RJ. I didn't see yeah. you down there. So, RJ, I just need your city and state, please. Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you. Allison Chapnick. Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you. Kyle Sayers. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, RJ. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on um, to our first agenda item, which is, uh, or excuse me, the approval of the minutes of the Tuesday, February 2nd meeting. I have, John? John. I have a couple of mainly little nitpicks, I guess. Um, John, hold on one second. I just need to put my headset on. I can't, I can barely hear you guys. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, on page four, up the under communication discussion item number three, yes. down at the bottom, it should be closures, but not closers. See that? Yep. And then, Got it. And then down under item number four, and I guess this might be a question for Ann. I just, when... It states that 70% of the park bond approval was slated for the ice rink, right? Yeah, that's, I think that, that's not accurate. Right, I, I, that's why I had raised my hand. If I said that in the meeting, I know you have to record what exactly what I said. If I said that, then, you know, leave it that way, and I will put a correction on the record today. Um, but what it, what it should be was that 70% of the citizens of Birmingham approved the park bond, which explicitly stated that, uh, that part of that was was slated for the ice arena um uh -huh. so if, if that's what i i hope I, I hope that's what you heard john no i understand that i was thinking budget not people voting and so that's a good clarification Anne. yeah that's what i remember i remember okay. that as your comment yeah it it, it it was approved by 70 percent of the vote and that's that's what i meant to convey and that's what i thought i had conveyed but 
you know, if the record, if, if the recording were to show that that's not what I said, then I'll be happy to make a, a correction on the record today. I can listen to the minutes and verify that and make the correction. Thank you so much, Connie. You're welcome. Then just a couple more, Connie, if you'll bear with me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, on page five, let's see. It's um, the paragraph that starts with Brandon Rinkensmeyer. Yep. And there's an I. It says Hockey Association and I, he. And I think that I should be deleted. Yep. And then the next paragraph starts with Zach Warson. Uh -huh. And uh, let's see how very trying of a year. I think there's a double year in there. See how there is. Yep. Year year. Yep. And then the final thing at the meeting should, at the very bottom, it should be March 2nd, not February 2nd. Correct. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, any other comments on the minutes? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion for approval? I move that we approve the minutes. John, second. Second that. Thanks, Ross. Okay, I'll do roll call. Heather Carmona. Yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Pam Graham. Yes. Ross Kaplan. Yes. Ellie Noble. Yes. Dominic Police. Yes. John Rushi. Yes. Thank you. Great. Okay. Our first um, item on the agenda is the Birmingham Ice Arena. We have the plans for we've been waiting for the. Uh, design review of the initial design drawings. And I know we have um, Robert Stempian joining us this evening. And I don't know, Robert, if you're starting off or Lauren, are you going to introduce us? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, and really, without um, need for much introduction, um, the Ice Arena Renovation Edition project has been uh, underway um, very. Uh, very successfully um, since the appointment of uh, or the hiring of Andrews Architecture in January. And Robert Stempian and Connie Folk and Carrie Laird have been working very diligently on this project. Um, and so without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to Robert Stempian. He's going to share, um, go over the uh, attached presentation and um, we'll be able to answer any questions you have. And we're real excited uh, to share this with you. Robert, please. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, let me just pull up my uh, presentation here. Uh, see. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes, yes, looks good. Okay. So um, what I'd like to do is give you an update on where we're at with this project. Um, it's been going at a very fast, since we engaged the architect and engineers on this project. Um, the, uh, the professional team is Endress Architects, Comprehensive uh, Engineers, and also B32 uh, Ice Plant Engineers. Um, it's, a, it's a great team. They have a lot of experience in ice arena projects. Uh, we've been collaborating on a weekly basis uh, with uh, scheduled meetings and also back and forth with emails and phone calls uh, just to make sure that we're tracking appropriately for this project. As you know, once the ice rink uh, shuts down in April, we have a very small window of opportunity to get our construction done before the ice season starts up in the fall. So everything has to kind of fall into place and uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that uh, everybody's uh, tracking appropriately with their, their roles and responsibilities on this project. So what I'd like to do is just kind of give you some timeline of what's happening um, right now with this project. Of course, we have our, our meeting this evening to give you an update. We also are meeting with the Architectural Review Committee on Thursday to kind of go over the, the plans and the uh, elevations for this project. Um, so that's been set up 
on behalf of the city. So we're looking forward to that engagement. Uh, we also have a commissioner workshop that we're going to discuss whether or not this should be part of an enterprise fund uh, project. So we had a, a, a lengthy meeting today to kind of go over that, uh, looking at our agenda, uh, being prepared to discuss uh, the, the pros and cons of being within an enterprise fund. And then on the 10th, we expect to issue the, the documents um, for a general contractor uh, RFP. Um, we are getting our 100% construction documents tomorrow. Uh, so we'll be reviewing that before they're submitted uh, for the G, uh, general contractor uh, RFP. And then at the end of the month, the RFP is due. So we're giving the, the contractors uh, approximately three weeks to put their, their bids together. Um, I've already had some, I guess, reach outs from some of the contractors in the area that have heard about this project and they're, they're interested in, in looking at uh, your, your particular project. I'll also reach out to some, I guess, experienced general contractors in, in building these type of facilities just to make sure that we have a, a healthy uh, list of uh, respondents to our RFP. Um, and then following that, uh, um, receiving the RFPs and vetting out uh, the contractors, we'll be giving a recommendation to the commissioners on the 12th. And hopefully shortly after that, we'll have our engagement with our general contractor. Um, I spoke with Connie or, or received an email from Connie about the last day of, of ICE rental, and that would be on the 24th of April. And then they start shutting down after that and removing the ice uh, from the existing facility um, main room, rink and uh, studio rink. And then our construction start will occur at the end of April, and we expect to have owner occupancy on September 20th. So those are kind of our target dates right now moving forward. So you have a little snapshot of how things are going to progress in the next few months. Um, this is a a floor plan of the renovation project and expansion. You can see up in the upper left-hand corner, this is where the locker room expansion will be. Uh, we're providing expansions to the existing four locker rooms and also providing a team locker room for the BU Hockey Club, along with a women's locker room and a referee room, which we're displacing from its current location, which is near the, uh, the main office in the corner. Uh, we had a uh, provide room for the ice refrigeration plant, um, which is the new mechanical equipment area you can see uh, in the middle of the page, uh, upper middle page, uh, uh, part of the page. Um, so this is a ammonia-based system, and it requires certain uh, precautions as far as containment of that system within a, um, a confined area. So we've accommodated that space um, in the existing mechanical room, but we needed some additional room to put all the equipment in. And also we have to isolate uh, any um, gas-fired uh, hot water tanks and uh, electrical gear. So we've created a, a separation between the new mechanical equipment and the electrical and gas-fired uh, equipment that currently exists in the ice arena. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see the new party room location, which is off of the studio rink which will be a nice addition uh, to the, the facility. It would be an, uh, a revenue generating um, entity that would be added to this facility. And then we have our main lobby renovation as well. Um, new lighting, uh, changing out from fluorescent lighting to LED lighting, new ceilings, flooring, uh, new concession furniture, uh, concession stand, um, and uh, in the men's and women's locker, uh, uh, restrooms will have new new countertops, um, as sinks and mirrors, just to kind of freshen up that space as well. In the main rink, we're adding some more rink storage in the corners, and of course, the major project is uh, redoing the um, the ice surface and the, the piping uh, for the main rink. Uh, that is, you know, one of the, the major elements of this renovation. With that, we're also uh, providing new player benches, both the visitors and the home team, along with the, the penalty boxes and the, the scorekeeper's booth. So with this, there's a lot of ADA upgrades that I'll talk about in a little bit here, but 
Um, because we're doing such an extensive renovation of the building, we felt it was appropriate to address the ADA needs for this, this facility. Back in 1973, they never really um, had such a robust uh, uh, code requirements for um, ADA compliance. So we felt that it was prudent to make sure that we address uh, several of the deficiencies that you currently have in the ICE arena. Uh, these are some elevations of what the uh, the front of the building will look like with the new party room addition. If you're facing the, the main entrance, it's to the right. And in the back of the building on the west side, we're doing a, a locker room expansion for the four existing locker rooms and the team locker room. And this uh, is a kind of a depiction of uh, all of the ADA um, improvements that we are looking at for this facility. Uh, the current locker room, toilet rooms aren't code compliant with ADA. So the plan is to renovate those so they, they have full compliancy with the current codes. Um, the uh, shower fixtures in, in, in the uh, uh, new facility will, or the new expansion will have um, code compliant shower heads and um, meeting ADA requirements, accessibility uh, to get into the showers with uh, removing the curves that currently exist. Um, to the right, you can see the player benches. This is just an example of one of the um, upgraded facility that actually has a ramp on the be uh, back side of the player benches so that you can actually get a wheelchair um, into the player bench area uh, in case you have someone that's wheel chair bound uh, that is coaching a team. So these are all the considerations that we're kind of looking at uh, for this renovation project that are incorporated into the construction documents. On the lower or middle left side, we have, uh, we're gonna improve the accessible route that gets back to those lockers, as well as some corner, uh, I guess, column guards that we would have uh, on these um, sloped columns that if let's say someone was um, using a cane, they would have some kind of detection device low on the column so that uh, they won't hit their heads against the, uh, the, the slow columns that uh, are currently in the facility. In the middle, we have concession furniture. Those are uh, examples of your existing tables and chairs. Um, the new Configuration will accommodate wheelchairs that could actually be pulled up to tables, which uh, you currently do not have right now. And then your concession counter, uh, the counter height does not uh, accommodate someone in a wheelchair um, that is uh, the proper transaction height that you need for meeting current ADA requirements. So we'll be modifying that as well. Um, the lower left hand corner, we have locker room door openings. Currently, they are less than 36 inches. Uh, I believe there are about uh, maybe two foot eight uh, openings where you need to have a, a 36 inch door uh, in order to accommodate wheelchair access. So those openings that are existing that go from the locker rooms into the shower rooms will be widened as well. Uh, the drinking fountains will be upgraded to meet ADA requirements. And also all the knob hardware that you currently have will be changed to lever hardware throughout the building. Um, there was also some discussion about, well, if we build this and renovate, you know, what are the potential revenue sources that we can capture to help offset our expenses for this facility? So we brainstormed on several different um, items that you know, we see in, in the marketplace with your, your competition and what they are doing as far as extending their ice season and capturing an additional revenue. Um, one of which is uh, extending your, your hockey season and especially spring leagues. Um, there's only a few ice arenas around that offer this um, as a, um, a program for their facilities beyond April. So I, I think there's a, probably a, a good chance that you could capture a lot of additional revenue with operating the spring hockey league out of the Birmingham Ice Arena. Also, there's opportunity for summer camps. Uh, these would occur between June and August. And that would entail probably, you know, high school development camps, power skating. There's a few programs out there that currently exist that uh, I know that Laura Strom has interest in 
perhaps running ice uh, during the, the spring and summertime. And there's also spring uh, tournaments that could occur that you currently uh, are not unable to sponsor at this time because of the fact you don't have an extended season. Another uh, benefit is um, adding the party room on to the facility in the, off the studio rink. Uh, that could be used for birthday parties in conjunction with ice rental, um, use it for team events, uh, community rental, curling events. Uh, that was something that was mentioned uh, during the commissioner's meeting that um, there would be probably some good interest in uh, providing curling as um, an added uh, amenity to the ice arena. And I just took this uh, uh, clip of uh, a website on the right-hand side here that kind of shows you different levels of uh, uh, how these party rooms are structured uh, relative to um, you know birthday parties and, and combining that with ice time. So I think you know this kind of opens up a lot of different opportunities for capturing additional revenue to support the, the ice arena. And then this is a, kind of an interesting thing that's occurring uh, throughout the state. It's called Live Barn. Um, what this company does is they install cameras on the ice arena, which are motion activated, and it'll track the play of the, of the game so that you can watch it remotely. It's a subscription-based type of program, and they, uh, they provide the ice arena a code. And if someone um, obtains a subscription, they can um, view this uh, activity on the ice at a certain time. And the city of Birmingham will actually capture revenue as part, like I think it's 30% of the subscription goes back to the ice arena. Um, Live Barn is, is a very popular um, camera system that's throughout the state of Michigan. I believe they have 92 locations. And uh, it's, it's great for parents that can't attend a game and they can just watch um, their son or daughter play remotely. So I think it's gonna be a, a great value add to this program. Um, also, you could have your uh, a video monitor set up in the lobby and actually watch um, the game from the lobby uh, through Live Barn. So we've uh, vetted this out with other um, streaming services and we felt that Live Barn would be probably a good choice for the city of Birmingham. There's no upfront costs for the installation of the cameras or the cabling or anything involved with this program. There's also the opportunity now for women's leagues. Uh, I know that Royal Oak has one and a few other ice arenas in the area. Uh, this is something that uh, I think could be really explored and, and uh, um, part of the overall program for the city of Birmingham as well. Of course, we have our um, BU program that's interested in the team locker room rental. Um, they also rent the, uh, the office uh, that's off the lobby. So that's another revenue source to help offset our, our costs associated with the arena. And then uh, this is uh, something that we kind of tossed around a bit was naming rights that uh, some facilities look to, you know, help offset their revenue or their expenses with uh, revenue from uh, naming rights. And they're, I guess, um, uh, set up on a, a time basis. So, for instance, if you wanted to uh, have naming rights for the arena, you could do that for a 10-year commitment, $30,000 a year. Uh, there's other different levels for advertising that we could explore uh, for the arena. Um, and uh, this is set up with a platinum, gold, and silver level, uh, depending on exactly what that advertisement will be. So this is a, you know, a huge potential, I guess, revenue source for the ice arena that I think is worthy of exploring uh, for the city of Birmingham. And that's the end of my presentation. So I, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anybody might have. Several here from members of the board, it looks like. Um, we'll start, Dominic, take your hands up first. Great, thank you. A um, Couple of uh, questions here. First, well, first one recommendation. On the slides 
that uh, you illustrated the, the concepts of the sponsorship and the uh, the party room rentals. Can I ask that you just put a watermark over that and say draft or example? Um, I'll be honest, the first time I read the document, I, I thought that was the official proposal oh, uh, for, okay, our, sure. for our rink. So I just don't want perhaps any confusion like that in the public. Um, so a couple of questions. First off, the bathrooms in the... Uh, in the lobby, you mentioned they would be a candidate for some cosmetic updates. Um, I thought in some previous discussions, we said that the, those bathrooms also had some ADA non-compliance. Can you clarify that point? Um, I don't believe, I think uh, they've been updated to meet um, ADA requirements as far as the stalls um, for those public restrooms. We had the architects look at that and to make sure that they were compliant. Um, we are going to address the, um, the countertops for the, the sinks and replace the sinks, have uh, uh, motion sensor, um, I believe, soap dispensers and um, faucets. Okay. Would, I guess, would that qualify to be shaded pink on your schematic? Um, yes, because that, well, it, it was kind of a minor thing. I was just hitting the, the major areas that we were addressing uh, for the the project so the pink areas are like the, the major renovations mm -hmm. um uh but it is uh, you know we were touching those public restrooms but um not in a uh, i would say a major significant way by relocating you know uh, plumbing fixtures and uh, stalls clear okay thank you uh next question mm -hmm. is in regards to the party space um on one view it, it appears as though it's an elevated platform or, or elevated viewing space however from the uh, exterior elevation it doesn't it's not immediately clear is is that viewing or party room a, a two-story addition to the structure uh no it's just a one-story uh addition it does have a high ceiling i would say it's probably about 10 feet okay is it something that you've considered where it could be a two-story addition or does that not fit in the uh, uh, uh the it, architectural? it wouldn't fit um and then you have ada accessibility requirements uh that you would have uh, to deal okay. with okay clear mm -hmm. i'm just thinking for doubling the, the useful space okay and then the last one and, and forgive my my ignorance on this one though in terms of the bleachers um i've been in the rink for practices and, and smaller events i've never been there for a, a, say a full show or a game are, are the do we know enough about the bleachers do we have enough space or or should we consider growing them or shrinking them? Well, right now, I believe you have about 940 seat capacity. Um, in a typical high school game, the maximum that you would typically have for seating capacity would be 500. So by modifying the bleachers, we're down to about, I think, 538 seats. So you're still within that bandwidth of what is typical for a high school type of event okay so as illustrated they are reduced bleachers versus what's installed today yes okay clear all right that's all my questions thank mm -hmm. you all right um pam uh, yes thanks thanks for the presentation i had a few questions um i couldn't find in my minutes where the, we had these notes but i remember some um questions to address one was something about the viewing area would it be raised or or uh yeah uh, above so that this so that you could have view of the practice ice or would it be at the same level and i wasn't i wasn't sure about that although maybe dominic question was part of that yeah we we look at that you know the the problem is if we raise the the party room floor that would you know present some problems because of ramping and and whatnot to address okay. the um, compliance. But what we decided to do there is to install clear dasher boards so that you would have a clear view into the uh, the studio rink from the party room. So it would be like a plexiglass type of dasher board that we would use to address uh, the visibility. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Another question I I recall was to investigate whether it would be possible to give access to a bathroom either the existing bathrooms or the locker room or something for 
community use, like when there was something on the ball fields or skate park or something and the ice wasn't open. I don't know if you address that or if maybe a decision that the ice arena would be open more hours and those would be the hours that the public could use the washrooms, but um, I'm just curious if you investigated options there. I guess I would defer to the city of Birmingham for you know their operational requirements. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, no, that's a good question. Uh, we did consider the use of the facility um, for or the fields and the park area um, it's currently being used by the skate park uh, person you know staff uh, excuse me the uh, users or the participants uh, at the outdoors um, hockey or hockey baseball um, and we did coordinate with the Birmingham Little League we talked to them about uh, access or because they had raised a uh, restroom access prior mm -hmm. and um, our intent is we have a concept master plan for Kenning Park, which includes a restroom uh, facility outdoors, and that would take care of for the playground, baseball users, field users, uh, skate park. So we wanted to keep that separate, um, but they have access to it now with the, the lobby restroom areas um, to come into the facility. And our facility is open, especially when it's going to be uh, almost 12 months out of the year. It's open from uh, almost dawn to dusk. So I think there'll be a lot of opportunity um, until such time as we're able to have an outdoor facility. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to, to mention, um, the, uh, the kitchen now, we're going to install a Dutch door that will have access to the outside. Or let's say if you wanted to sell hot dogs to people that or, you know, the patrons of the park, we have that ability just to open up half the door so that, um, you know, we could actually have vending um, through that kitchen area. Um, I know we're not going to talk about all the things like naming rights and, and, and all of that until it's a, a proposal, but it seems like the locker room rental is, is, is current and is something that would continue and expand. And I just had a question if that locker room rental was like exclusive or if they are renting and providing furniture so they can store equipment, but others can use it when they're not there. I, I didn't understand. I don't understand the rental arrangement. Yeah, that would be a, a lease arrangement with the BU hockey program. They're providing lockers for the facility. Um, and actually, um, we talk about um, they're going to add additional lockers uh, to the facility as well to actually to build out the entire space. So they've uh, had some commitments to uh, helping uh, with how that space is uh, going to be finished out. And um, I know that the city of Birmingham is, is looking at um, uh, putting in some kind of agreement together for the BU hockey program. Step down. All right, uh, Ross. I just had a, a quick question. I think most of it was answered, but uh, I know at one of the meetings it was discussed also if a storage area could be accessed from outside for the baseball. And I see that you have two small storage areas, is either one on the right or left. I think the one on the left would make more sense to have an outside door. So uh, I don't know if that's needed internally only, or is that an opportunity or was that discussed? Um, we did look at that at one time. Uh, we were looking at a, a much larger storage room in the corner, but because of the sight lines, we had to kind of crop that storage room down so that people in the stands wouldn't be encumbered by that storage room in the corner. But it really, I guess, depends on, you know, how much storage that we'll need in the facility, because right now we only have the two corners that we're dedicating for storage. Um, keep in mind, we're just placing all the storage that currently used to be in the upper left-hand corner or the, uh, the the southwest corner, if you will. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure, Connie, um, how many items that you would need to store in the, in the facility and, um, you know, especially with your extra hockey nets and whatnot, um, you're going to be storing that in those storage areas. But if there is opportunity, I guess, to um, 
accommodate the outside storage, it would make sense to cut a door in and, and provide that access to the outside. Yeah. Oh, Heather, if I could just add on to that, I think we've, we've been talking to the Little League as well, and we contemplated doing something of that nature, but since we were losing or sacrificing a lot of storage interior, um, Little League, we made arrangements with them to have some storage and some use, temporary use, in a facility that we'll have created outdoors. And then again, I'll go back to the park concept master plan that was created. Um, and when we do some other future phases of Kenning Park development, we can incorporate um, some more storage and, and um, uh, scoring areas and things of that nature for Little League. So I, I talked to the president and, and uh, we're all on the same page. Okay, hey, great. Um, we have a few other questions from board members, Susan. Um, Robert, thank you for a great presentation. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot about how hockey uses the ring over the last six months. Um, and so I also represent figure skating because I'm from the figure skating side of it. And um, sadly, I really haven't been in the ring much this year, but I prior to this year, the last 10 years, I've been there quite a bit. So uh, some of my questions around figure skating before that, I just wanted to understand the bump out on the west side is that going to bump out of the building or is it going to be contained within the um, perimeters of the current building uh it's going to bump out about 16 feet to accommodate the uh the locker room expansion on that uh, side of the building okay and so, so it's it's basically a big rectangle um addition that will be put on on the west side okay and so will that affect parking or is there enough room there that it will not affect parking uh it will not affect Parking and I, I don't believe it'll affect the master plan that you have for Kenning Park because I know that there's a plan for uh, putting parking in the back on the west side of that building, uh, but we're only going out about 16 feet, so I, I believe that's not going to encroach into that planned parking area. Okay, great. Um, second question goes along with Dominic, and um, it just moves to the naming rights of the club or of the ring and. Um, I'd, water, I'd like to see that watermarked as well and some discussion on that. I feel like there is a lot of history in this Birmingham Ice Arena between hockey and figure skating. And, um, you know, there's the Staples Center out there and things like that. And I just hope we really talk about that before that goes through because I think there's a lot of passion for this rink and history. And I would hate to see a, a Staples rink or even somebody's name at this point, because hockey loves that ring so much, figure skating does. And I'm just hoping we can talk about that before that gets put out there. And I know it's just an idea right now. I know we're looking for money and I think that's a great idea and great suggestions, but um, that's what I'd just like to flag a little bit for future discussion. Um, additional revenue also, I just don't want you to forget about figure skating. I do believe you will have a lot of figure skaters on this rink in the summer. We currently are going all over the place to get ice because it is very valuable in the summer and they do skate year round. So I wanna make sure that we're highlighting the figure skating club and just figure skating in general. Um, the next two questions are really more very specific questions. Um, will this, I just know the figure skating club has some equipment in there on the ceiling. Will that affect that? Does that need to be removed before things start? Yes. Um, I, I understand there's a company that actually does that removal. Mm -hmm. It's a specialized company uh, that does the, the hoist removals. Okay. That will have to be coordinated before any construction starts. Okay. And so that's probably by end of April, is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and then my next question, and this is really more because I haven't been there a lot in the last year, um, the sound system, I assume that's working, or if not, is there any concern with that to be fixed or updated? Uh, the plan is to update the sound, the PA system throughout the building. Oh, okay, great, great, yeah. great. Um, okay, I, oh, I guess just one other question. Are we not replacing those Birmingham, or the, excuse me, the bathroom stalls, or did I miss that? And um, the front bathrooms. The, the main bathrooms? Yes. Um, You'll have new rubber flooring, 
the vanities, the sinks, and the, the faucets, and the soap dispensers, but nothing with the uh, existing partitions and okay. the toilet fixtures. Because if my recollection is they don't look great and um, not trying to spend more money, but if we're trying to get this nice, I don't know if they can be painted or something. Um, just a thought to put out there. Yeah, I, I would uh, say that painting would be part of the program. Uh, we're painting the entire facility, so it'll oh. give a, a fresher look. And I think with the new flooring too, it'll help. Um, we're trying to go back to the, you know, the, I guess the Birmingham Ranger colors uh, uh, that uh, is the pr predominant program there. But, uh, you know, it'll have blues, grays, uh, reds uh, throughout the facility. Great. Thank you so much. Your work has been great. And we're very excited about this. And I know there's a lot of people on here from hockey and figure skating tonight that are excited about what you're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. All right, Susan. Okay. Um, let's see, Ann, you had a question? Um, yeah, a real quick. First, I just want to reiterate everything uh, Susan just said. I agree with her on the figure skating side of things. I've got two little girls who are going to be so excited about all this. I'm excited looking at all these ideas and plans. Um, I was wondering if there is any ability to get like a virtual tour that we could put on our website so that people could you know, virtually walk through the renovations as we, you know, move forward with, with the process this spring. Um, not that I really want to invite a whole bunch of disputes about the paint color scheme, but I, I just think it would be really cool if we could get a virtual tour of some kind. I, I don't know if that's something you can do. Um, just wanted to ask. Um, it's a possibility. It wasn't part of the scope for the architect to provide, but, okay. you know, we could, you know, explore if they have that capability to add some kind of um, video animation of what it would be like to be, you know, going through the ice arena. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. Ellie. Um, hi. Um, oh, am I supposed to take lower the lower it? My my little. Oh, you did. Okay, <laughs> Robert. Thank you very much for your presentation. I I thought it was. Great, and um, I'm really excited about the ADA compliance. Having uh, some kids in my family that have had to have some help in that regard, um, as well as I have four people that play hockey in my family. So we've really been, and in fact, the the thing back there was was drawn by the 41 year old when he was little. So you know that we've been at the uh, Birmingham Ice Arena for years. Um, one thing I was wondering about was the, um, the, the bleachers. You, you say you're taking away seats because you don't need so many for hockey games. I just was wondering about the ice shows um, and how many people come to those. Well, the reason why we're eliminating some rows of bleachers is because we're pushing the ice arena further to the east. And the reason for that is you currently do not have a ADA uh, accessible route, route from uh, the back of the player benches to the locker room. It's approximately maybe 27 inches from the columns to the, the backside of the player benches. So, in addition to that, when we modify the, um, the player benches, we're adding a handicap ramp behind where the players sit. So that's an additional four feet that's added on to the existing uh, dashers. So um, there's, I guess, as we add the aisleway, the ramp uh, associated with the player's bench, we have to push the rink over, let's say, another eight feet and that would uh, impact the bleachers. Um, the ice show, I'm not sure how many um, participants you get for the ice show. I think that that's probably a county question. We have approximately, there was a, over, about 100 children in the ice show, not last year, but the previous year. So that center seating should be, should be fine for our ice shows. Okay. <laughs> That's that on? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. John, you were up next. 
John Rush. Yep, we need to unmute you, John. Unmute. Um, I just wanted to express my gratitude and I guess our gratitude to Robert for bringing his expertise and knowledge and hard work to this project. I, you know, beginning with the, with the schedule and the challenge of trying to coordinate everything, um, I don't know, I just wanted to express my gratitude. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. All right. I don't think any other comments from members of the board. All right. We have a couple of hands up from members of the public. Um, Robert Runco, you have your hand raised. Would you like to speak? Introduce yourself. Hi. Yeah, it's Robert Runco here. And Robert, obviously, uh, you and I have had several conversations about this. So two things I wanted to bring up to you on this is, are you aware that there's that black netting that's around... Uh, the rink there, obviously, is that uh, part of the package to change that to white? Because if we're going to do the live barn, it's going to be difficult to see through that black. Um, or is live barn going to be on the bench side? Uh, live barn will be on the bench side. Okay. Then probably that still should be something up for kind of consideration because it's definitely hard to see for viewing purposes, both mm -hmm. for the figure skating and hockey games, obviously. It's hard to look through the black. Everywhere else has white. So I'd like to bring that up if you could. Item number two is the point on the rental for the BU hockey team. Obviously, you guys are all very aware, you know, that this is a school sanctioned. Both Seaholm and Groves participate on the ice there. Um, so you'd be charging our own city ice teams, right? So I just would like you guys to consider that before you think about charging the BU hockey team for a locker room rental. Um, make aware that, you know, it's obviously a school slash city event using the city rink. So that's all I got. All right, thank you, Robert. Uh, let's see, we have other members here. We have Gary Charles. Gary, would you like to speak? You're up. Gary, are you on uh, yeah, still? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, just uh, oops. Sorry, so there we go. Thank you. Um, just wanted to say, first of all, that was Rob Runco. I don't think he said he's with the president of Birmingham Hockey Association, so he's certainly um, a major player in helping support all this stuff. Um, I'm a past Birmingham Hockey Association president as well as Birmingham Unified. And now um, you've heard me before and just want to continue to reiterate our continued support for this project. There's, um, I think Ms. Collins put it best when she said there's passion for this rink and there's a lot of passion for this rink and um, you've got all the support in the world to move this forward. And I think we'll continue to be there through every step of the way. So we just want to remind you we're still here and We've got a lot of backing from a lot of people on this one. So keep up the great work. It's been so much. We work, we're so well with the city and um, Robert Stempy and I on this going forward. We're, we're very excited about what we've got coming here. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you to both you and Robert very much. All right. We do have another hand here from uh, Joshua Kramer. Yes. Joshua hi. Uh, yep. Hi. Good evening. Hey, uh, my daughter's with the uh, figure skating club, and I guess one of the questions I had um, is the women's locker room looks somewhat small compared to the other locker rooms. Um, we have, I think, approximately 40 girls that skate, not all obviously at the same time, but they also have equipment and, you know, skates to take off. So I guess where would be a designated space then for them? Because looking at the drawing, obviously, I don't know the scale, but it looks significantly smaller than the, than the other locker rooms. So I'm wondering how that would accommodate the the figure skaters. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, the women's locker room is really for accommodation of co-ed hockey teams or um, where you would have both boys and girls combined and they would have a, a separate space to go to. Currently, you do not provide that type of facility uh, in the ice arena, but I would imagine that the figure skating um, teams that would uh, use the ice arena would go into either one of the four locker rooms uh, that will be expanded upon as part of this uh, renovation project. Um, those locker rooms currently, I think, are about 260, uh, 240 square feet each, and we're expanding it to 560 square feet. So they're um, very ample-sized, and 
they would be available for rental for whoever is, you know, um, using the ice as, uh, you know, a, a dressing space uh, for either uh, figure skating or hockey uh, events. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would just ask the board to consider it an equitable, equitable space, right? Um, I guess, you know, the other point I'd like to make, and I think Susan made this point too, is, um, you know, with the ice rink potential from a revenue standpoint, you know, we're going to Dearborn and Troy and, and Royal Oak because it's not open in the summer. So if it was an open in the summer, it would be a, a significant additional revenue source for the uh, city. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Joshua. Yep. Thank you. I see a couple more hands up here. We have a Zoom, a call on a Zoom call, TRP. I don't know who that is if you'd like to introduce yourself on the phone. All right, if not, we're going to move along. Um, Gary, I see your hand up, and I'm going to give Brandon a chance to speak, and we'll come back to you. Um, Brandon? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Brandon Rankinsmeyer, BHA Mini Mike Director. Robert, really appreciate the time and energy as well as the board that's been put into this as a former player and now parent there at the rink. Super excited for what's uh, happening there. Uh, two things. One, I wanted to reiterate that I think there's an enormous amount of opportunity for summer skating, skating some men's leagues. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, ways you could use that ice year round. Uh, curling, I didn't even think of. Uh, curling is an expensive sport, but it'd be cool to see how you guys would envision doing that. Uh, second note, I just wanted to, I think at some point, Robert, you had noted in the studio rink using clear boards to create a sort of seamless uh, kind of viewpoint or vantage point from that room. I can just tell you my son uh, did the THL. Uh, and when you get three and four and five-year-olds out there with hockey sticks, I don't know how long that clear plexiglass is going to last. But uh, you may want to factor that in as something every few years you got to be replacing. I think it's a great way to accommodate the viewing since you can't elevate the floor, but it is going to get beat up. So just wanted to note that. And thanks again for everyone's time. Thank you, Brandon, again for your support. Um, okay, we're back to Gary. We'll come back to you. And then we have two other comments from board members. So, um, Gary, you can go ahead. Um, I'll just I'll just say uh, TRP Zoom is Steve Carroll. He's the current BU. I know he'll jump in here in a second. That's RJ's dad. So um, we had a good combo there, good family combo. But I was just going to reiterate what Brandon said. I think there's a tremendous amount of untapped revenue during the summer and not in the fall and spring, early, late spring, early fall. That is uh, certainly the summer. There's a lot of ice skating where a lot of the kids go other places, whether it's figure skating or hockey right now, including camps and other things that are going on. So I think there's I think there's a lot to be had over that period for sure. I agree 100% with what Brandon said. Thank you. Um, see, see, Pam, you had your hand back up. Um, yes, thanks. I, I was looking at the locker room layout and um, uh, regarding a, a previous comment, maybe I, I would like to consider that we don't label locker rooms, team locker, 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 women's locker. Um, what I think I see in the, in the a layout is that we have more space for locker rooms and they're more flexibly configured so that if there were a league of women, they could use locker room one or, or, or whatever. And I think that, um, it, it's, uh, uh, nicer to consider to uh, label them as as locker rooms and and count and highlight the flexible arrangement and partitioning between them rather than to label them as teams and women. Thanks. Good point. Well, there's Susan. Um, my question or my point was very similar to Pam's because. I was writing things out too, and it's hard to say women's locker room. It just gets into all sorts of messes there. Um, I just wanted to clarify though, is it the team locker room that is changing that that will be rented out and the other locker rooms will rent out like they are now? I'm not even sure if they do rent, but you know, for example, when it's a figure skating ice show, we use all those locker rooms. So to me, the question is, I think, one group is planning to rent out that team locker room and spend money on it. 
Um, is that correct? And is that locker room not usable by anybody else, which I would understand if they're being rented? And then are the other locker rooms going to be utilized in the same way they have in the past? Like Pam said, if it's a figure skating event, we can use all of them except maybe the team yeah. and who's ever renting them. I just wanted to clarify that because I think that's where some of the questions are coming in because I think the rental is for that bigger one. Right. Um, the intention is the team locker room would be rented. Um, and that gives the team the ability to keep their gear in that locker room, in their lockers. Um, and um, the other locker rooms would uh, be part of your ice rental uh, for the facility. So we're, we're going to, you know, we've looked in to other arenas that provide this type of uh, team dedicated locker area, mm -hmm. such as DSC. I believe they have three high school teams that skate out of DSC. Um, there's also uh, Oak Park, where I believe Brother Ice has, I think, three team locker rooms associated with that rink, which are dedicated for those programs. So we would have a similar type model uh, for the Birmingham Ice Arena. So the other locker rooms, anyone can use when that ice is rented by that group. Correct. Okay, thank you. And um, and I just will reiterate, there are lots of hockey teams and figure skating teams. I think the first year might not show all the revenue, but by second summer, we're gonna be so happy with the renovations and having that summer ice and the money, the revenue that it brings in. So thank you again. All right, uh, Dominic. Yes, thank you. I, questions and comments from the public uh, prompted me with two more questions from my side. Um, the first is in regards to figure skating. There's, there's a lot of discussion here about renting of, of rooms and, and such, but during, say, a weekly figure skating class, it's been my experience that you know the, the students, along with oftentimes with their parents, they, they're in the lobby changing skates you know from from shoes to skates from skates back to shoes uh and with figure skaters not not with a ton of equipment you know they usually come in with a roller bag or a duffel bag type of thing so I, i'm wondering what is the at this point do we know a future vision of of where those types of activities the will be accommodated or will it stay, remain in the lobby um and if so are there any provisions for securing the the bags while the the kids are out on the ice so in the lobby, what we've accommodated is uh, lockers that would be, um, if you're facing, I guess, north, uh, just before the public restrooms against the back wall, there'll be uh, uh, lockers provided uh, for the facility, along with a, a changing bench in front of the, the, uh, the lockers. So we, we took that into consideration because we know that the, um, whether it's public skating or perhaps figure skating, uh, they like to uh, put their skates on in the lobby and uh, prefer not to go to the locker rooms uh, to use those facilities. So we've accommodated that need and, and provided lockers in the lobby. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and my second question is uh, not necessarily for, for you, Mr. Stempion, but, but more so for the, uh, the, the gentleman representing the, the Birmingham leagues or, or perhaps even for the, the Birmingham staff here there was a comment made by by the public in that suggested that the hockey teams that are currently utilizing the facility and and, and have expressed thankfully there's their strong interest in continuing uh it was a comment made that they are in fact school or birmingham public school teams and i, I was just hoping to draw some clarity on that are these school teams or are they club teams that are feeders into the school system Uh, this is Robert Runco. If you'd like my answer to that, the Seaholm and Groves High School is a combination um, team of Birmingham Unified Hockey Team. So it is a school team. Does that make sense? So it's not a club where they're paying dues to, or, you know, like a, a travel team? No, it is not. The okay. Birmingham Unified Hockey Team is uh, high school kids in our city of Birmingham school district. Does that help? It does. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, and, and so the ice arena in our city is essentially their, their home field. That is 100% correct. Thank you. Thank you. There was a time uh, where um, the BU hockey program had to rent ice time at Hazel Park 
um, because there wasn't enough ice time available uh, to accommodate their needs. So I think that has evolved over time and uh, they're fortunate enough to have more ice time associated, I think all the ice time, Connie, I'm not sure, but uh, um, in the past, uh, they had to seek other arenas for um, practices and games. Yeah, they also skated out of Troy too before they were able to come into Birmingham. Right. Right. Thank you. And as, aside from Birmingham United, are there other hockey teams that are currently utilizing our space or, or renting the space? Well, you have your um, your Birmingham Association uh, Hockey League, uh, but there is a probably opportunity to capture more leagues, uh, more travel teams. Um, and maybe, Connie, you have some history on perhaps travel teams that have skated out of Birmingham. Um, sometimes, like uh, Jimmy John's, they'll, they'll latch onto an ice arena as their home base. Same with Little Caesars. I think they, they skated at one time out of uh, Southfield Civic Center. Um, but that it kind of opens up the, to the opportunity of attracting those type of clubs to your ice arena because now – you're going to have a, a brand new, essentially renovated uh, facility that I think is going to be a big draw to some of these clubs. Well, thank you for sure. answering the questions thoroughly. Appreciate that. And this is Robert Runko again. I'll just pipe in on that comment. So just so you're aware, the Birmingham Hockey Association, one, works with BU uh, hand in hand to make sure that all their home games, obviously, we want in our home arena, Birmingham, right? And then, uh, secondly, the Birmingham Hockey Association pretty much buys as much ice as the city is willing to sell uh, to the tune that we actually buy ice uh, 14 hour and a half blocks at Cranbrook. We also buy currently at Hazel Park and at DSC. So, our demand for hockey here has exceeded your capacity to what you guys can deliver to us uh -huh. uh, within the reasonable hours uh, of the time that we can actually use it when the kids are either out of high school or the travel teams can use it. So unfortunately, there really isn't enough availability. And Connie can probably add to that uh, to get any outside teams because we buy everything that you guys are able to sell us. Um, and that includes darn near the majority of all your Saturdays and Sundays uh, for games. And we also host uh, tournaments there as well. So as much capacity as you guys have, well, unfortunately, we basically bought it all. Um, yep. So and hopefully that also, Yep. And you also host districts too. Correct. So Robert, that being said, would the BU program or the Birmingham Hockey Association be I guess, interested in the extended season ice rental uh, for the facility? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. So it helps us uh, during the summer as well. Um, and obviously in the spring, you know, for tryouts. So basically, we've worked very well with County hand in hand, obviously, you know, between us and BU, obviously the largest buyer of your ice time. But uh, we do a very good job of uh, allocating any unused ice. Uh, we do have uh, uh, a spreadsheet uh, if it's not being used available for sale. So obviously even, you know, we want to work with the figure skating team as well. Obviously, if they, you know, if there's a short term ice rental that they might need, they would have access to that to capture any ice that they might need as well. But again, you're pretty much at capacity. If you if the city of Birmingham was able to build another rink, we would probably fill that. And these are all, just so you're aware, and I'm, well, I'm going to bring this up to the commission meeting, just so you guys are, your board members, and gosh, I appreciate all you guys do, because I know it's tough, but just so you're aware, we are only allowed per team three kids out of our district. So we are, well, I'd say about 90% capacity of Birmingham kids. So I know there's been some notion that, oh, this is for other kids. It's not. We're predominantly Birmingham kids. So I just want to make sure you guys understood that, too. Thanks, Robert. Heather, just um, so you know, um, mm -hmm. TRP, which is Steve Carroll, he's trying to get in. I'm not hey, seeing that in my hand. Oh, yep. good. Yep, he's on. Can you guys hear me? All right, sorry. Yeah, I just I wanted to just talk uh, for a couple minutes because I coached in BHA for 
you know, probably eight years, I was president of BHA. I'm currently president of uh, BU. I skate at the rink twice a morning myself, and I've got a daughter in the figure skating program. So I think I cover all the bases of, uh, of what's going on at the rink, and I have a pretty good understanding uh, you know, of the needs. And, you know, from a BU perspective, we're, you know, fully supportive of this. We appreciate, you know, everyone's efforts. Um, we are going to be renting that locker room. Uh, we're also going to be putting in, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of our own uh, booster money to, you know, to do our own flooring, to put in our own lockers. Uh, so it will be, you know, very specific to us. That being said, if, you know, if, uh, if another organization for a special event needed to use that extra space, you know, we certainly, you know, would try to be as accommodating as possible to uh, your other organizations, uh, you know, w with the, within the city. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there uh, from a figure skating perspective. I know someone was mentioning, you know, about locker rooms for them. Uh, it's my understanding today, just, you know, with my daughters in the program too, and, and Connie, you can correct me if I'm wrong. They have the ability to use the lockers at any time they want today, similar to how the hockey teams use it. They just all, I think it is because as someone said, they've got less equipment. They just like to all get changed in the, in the lobby. Um, but they certainly could at any time go and use, uh, you know, have, have, uh, the team lockers, uh, you know, allocated to them. So, uh, that's no different than any other team or anyone else who is, uh, who is renting the ice. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention, cause someone had asked about, uh, you know, it being a high school team and it is, it's, it's uh, Birmingham, uh, grows and see home, but we do not only pay for the uh, locker room, we pay for the ice. So similar to, uh, other travel teams, you know, each of our kids pays, you know, about $2,500 a year to cover our ice costs and, and other costs uh, to be a part of the team. And that's a lot different than other high school sports, um, you know, where they, you know, don't have those costs. But our, our kids who are, you know, part of the Birmingham school system do pay uh, a lot of money to uh, participate in the program and, and rent that ice uh, from the city. So uh, that's it. Just, you know, again, wanted to uh, just reiterate the support of uh, BU and, and BHA, and uh, and thanks everyone for your time. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, let's see, uh, we've got a couple of board members. Gary, if you can hold on one minute. Susan, go ahead. Oops. Unmute, Susan. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to comment on Dominic and Mr. Runkle's comments too, um, because um, the, the hockey team and the figure skating club are both unified clubs. They're high school teams and they're playing on these rinks and both teams, you know, we have to pay for the ice as well. I think that's different just because skating is a little more expensive than some of the other teams. But I did a little research because we keep hearing, look, you know, there's people from out of Birmingham using these rinks. So we've got a um, hockey team and a figure skating Rose Sea Home combined team. Our high schools cover seven cities. So they cover Beverly Hills, Bingham Farms, Birmingham, Bloomfield Township, Franklin, Southfield, part of Southfield Township, and Troy. So I just, you know, I, I want us to keep getting that word out. It's not that, you know, it's good to have other people on our ice. They're fixed costs on this ice. And so a lot of those other people are just simply from these hockey teams, these high school hockey teams, and the nature of a team sport where you play other people and you bring them into play. So I just thought some of that research, if anyone questions us, we have that back up for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Susan. Um, Ann, you have a comment, and then we have two, a couple. We're going to go back to the public again. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Um, for, because some people I think are a little, there, there's a little bit of confusing discussion on the different organizations that call our rink home. Um, you have you have BU, which is the high school hockey team. And I believe there's a JV, was there, is there still a JV component of that? There used to be a JV component yes. to that. Um, so BU, that's separate from BHA, which is the our home league, which also has a travel component to it, right? Or, or is that, is the Birmingham Rangers separate from BHA? I think it's part of the organization. If uh, Connie, you could probably address that. Connie stepped away for a minute. That's okay. Um, and then you have the 
the figure skating club of Birmingham, and then you have the high school figure skating team. Uh, now, if there are other organizations I'm missing, I just want to clarify the separation between these. Um, the high, like Susan was saying, the high school figure skating team has to pay for a lot out of um, more, like like the hockey team, we have to pay for more than a normal school sport does. It's subject, it's a source source spot for those skaters. Um, but uh, I I just wanted to reiterate what Susan was saying and, and try to clarify those different groups um, and specify what who where they all fall into place here. Hey, and this is Steve Carroll. Just to clarify the question around, so BHA is the hockey association um, for the youth hockey within the city of Birmingham. Within that, you have a house program, and then you have a travel program. Okay. And the travel program is what is called the Birmingham Rangers. Got and it. then you have, you know, basically Birmingham hockey. Uh, they all wear the same uniforms, but just you know, it's just different levels of play. Um, and I'd say it's it's grown over the last eight to 10 years from, you know, probably nine or 10 teams and, you know, a hundred kids in the program to now, you know, Rob would have the numbers, but, you know, it's well north of, uh, you know, 250 kids probably in the program today. Um, and, it can, and Rob said there's a huge, you know, demand for the ice, but and all of that, that, helps separate, answer your question. that is separate from, from other organizations that we were saying might want to come in. Like you were, uh, I think they were saying little Caesars or, some other organizations might be interested in in claiming our ice as, as their own as their home rink as well. Yeah, and, and I think as Rob as, as Rob was saying, you know, right now there's just we have so much demand ourselves for it that we don't really those outside teams wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity at this point in time. Um, if Birmingham Hockey Association weren't there, then that would be an option. But I, I don't see that happening. Um, and uh, but I think over the summer. And in the spring, a lot of other teams may you know, want to use. I think you'd be able to do a lot of camps. There's other people saying I, they're just a huge revenue opportunity um, in the spring and in the summer with the facility. Okay, thank you. This is a great, great clarification, and I was going to ask. I was wondering the same thing. A little, all this, the trying to keep a little flow chart going here. Okay. Um, all right. We have a couple of comments from the public here. We have some Lori's iPhone. Hi, um, my daughter played, uh, well, she started ice skating at Birmingham and then she played for Cranbrook's hockey team. Um, I just, uh, I appreciate that clarification about the teams because um, I wasn't getting that either. Um, I'm uh, interested in the gender parity of the use of locker rooms and I, it's oftentimes, and I don't know what's planned, um, when you're talking about having one locker room reserved for a team, oftentimes that the team is the boys like I'm thinking of the boys Rangers or whatever, and I would like to see it equally reserved for the top girls team or whatever, or else have no reserved locker space, which I think is equally acceptable. And then my second comment is, um, I think we should also look into um, opening up the rink to sled hockey, because if we're gonna be ADA compliant, that could be something special for Birmingham. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Uh, let's see, Gary, you had another, your hands up again. Uh, yeah, hi, I just, um, just a couple of clarifications that were made, and I think most of these were clarified now, but going back to the high school, the BU teams, that those are, those are, that is a high school sanctioned program, both of RC and JV. Um, and, but the school though, pays very little of that, similar to the figure skating. I'm not sure the entire, well, I know figure skating pays most of their own as well, but um, maybe in a year is a hundred fifty thousand dollar budget in BU, and I think the school pays about eight thousand dollars. So again, it's it's a predominantly huge amount is is put on by the the families and players that rent that space. So just so you know that it's, while it's a school sanctioned sport, the school pays pays very little of it, if anything. Okay. All right, um, I think we are, looks like coming to a close on board comments. Any other comments from the board or public on the design? And we will now consider the, um, the motion of the resolution. Okay. Um, so we do have an, a suggested resolution. Um, it reads a little funny to me, but I'm going to read it. it um, to accept the design review 
I think it should be in that it meets the expectations of the renovations and additions of the Birmingham Ice Arena project. And Lauren, just to clarify then, our approval then, um, tomorrow is the meeting of the Architectural Review Board, correct? So tonight, um, we're just asking that you accept the design as presented. Um, the Architecture Review Committee is gonna look at it on Thursday. Thursday, okay. And yep. Their perspective is obviously a little different than the park board, but right. the park board will have reviewed it. Okay. In comment, of course. Right. So our our yeah. feedback will be sent to the ARC, correct? Certainly. Okay. And I, just want to be, I just want to be clear on the on the next step, which in the timeline, um, while the meeting was set, I don't know if the resolution necessarily states that. So I just want to be clear on that. Yeah, I will make a point of it. The ARC agenda has already been released. So, um, but I, since I'll be attending the ARC meeting as well with other staff and Robert um, and Robert Andrus, we, I will definitely point that out to them. So we're making a motion to approve the resolution to send this to the, well, the concurrent is going to the Architectural Review Board, but it's our approval of the design review. Again, the resolution doesn't read right to me. I don't know if it's... it's... Yeah, in essence, to, tonight, you know, we wanted to bring the, the design to the Park and Rec Board, of course, um, before next steps, which, you know, Robert, we the timeline is pretty aggressive, and it has been, um, and we're trying to keep this on track so we don't lose the season of development um, and improvements to the ice arena. So yeah. tonight... We're just asking that you accept the design review. Um, this project originally was to uh, improve the refrigeration and, me and mechanical system of shifting the ice arena. And that was the $2 million that was budgeted um, in the budget currently this year. And that was so we don't lose our arena for operations. And then with the bond, um, vote that passed in November, of course, we're able now to expedite the uh, additional th potential $3.1 million that for economies of scale, of course, if you're going to construct a building, you might as well take advantage of doing the other improvements that were called out as necessities and um, critical needs as part of the whole package of the estimated $5.1 million. So if this meets your expectations of those renovations interior and exterior um, modifications for uh, expansion, um, that's what we're asking tonight. Okay, so that's the clarity I was around the expectation versus the, um, and the criteria for the renovation. So it's what we've set forth in accordance with, with the bond at this point and for the anticipated renovations. All right. Yeah. Heather? Hi. Heather? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, John. Mr. John. I just wonder, I, I just took a crack at rewriting it a tiny bit. And what I came up with is to accept that the design meets the expectations regarding the renovations and additions to the Birmingham Ice Sports Arena project. I think the word review needs to be in that because that is the formal process that we're going through as a design review, right? Okay. I think it so should read to accept, to accept the design review. To accept the design review in that it in in that it meets the expectations of the anticipated renovations and additions to the Birmingham Ice Arena or of the Birmingham Ice Arena project. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. Just it just grammatically sounded really awkward to me, and I was trying to make sure I understood the intent of it. Lauren, are you following me at all? If we to accept the design review, in that it meets the expectations of uh, the you you are wordsmithing it perfectly. So, however the board uh, deems appropriate mm -hmm. for your acceptance tonight, that'd be wonderful. All right, let me put it forth again, and then we will look for somebody to uh, for motion. To accept the design review in that it meets the expectations of the renovations and additions of the Birmingham Ice Arena project. Okay. Anybody like to make a motion on the resolution? 
Susan? I might make a motion, a motion to approve that. Yeah. Okay. And anyone want to second that? Uh, I'm not sure if this would be something to add to the resolution or or how to pass this view on to the architectural review board or the commit or the city commission, but um, noting uh, board member and community discussion regarding the use of locker rooms and a recommend a recommendation for the architecture review, the community and board member questions about locker room. Uh, designations. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if necessarily. I mean, we heard a lot of things tonight, and I think what what the intent is is that those are documented in staff. Then those are things that can be discussed. So, um, sorry to interrupt you, Heather. We have a motion on the table, so we do. We have to process the motion before we continue the discussion. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it was. I meant. I meant to add an, to ask if it's possible to add an amendment to the to the motion or to propose a different motion. Uh, if someone could school me on what I should do, whether an addition or rephrasing that motion or proposing a different motion is the proper action. I don't want to just object to this motion without having that comment. Or I could just vote no. I mean, I believe on the under Robert's Rules of Order, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's called a friendly amendment. Is that, mm -hmm. did that go? That is correct. So that means, Pam, you could go forth with an amendment with a friendly amendment on my motion right now. Uh, do we need to vote? We can vote differently, like the um, the amendment. Uh, uh, what, I would say that it meets expectations, but the community and board member. Uh, recommendations that the use of the locker room we have further studies or have further discussion needs is in need of further discussion. Um, Lauren, just went, Susan, go ahead before Lauren. So I have a question and Pam, I respect your, um, what you're asking for. Is that a design amendment or is that something of how they're being used? And so if it's how they're being used, does that have to amend this decision? Because we're, saying this is the design, nothing in here says this is how it has to be used. Okay, I think that's fine. And I was going to say that I don't think that I want to draw a different plan for the locker rooms, but presentation of the design and firm decision about how exclusive use of the locker room might be defined in male and female usage. If that's recorded in the minutes, I'm fine. And I retract my friendly amendment request and I would second the uh, motion to uh, approve the suggest the re resolution that was stated by Heather. Um, before before we do, that, Lauren, did you have a comment? We do have a second, but why don't we do? No, I'm just going to address words. address that. I think and, and Susan hit it right on the mark. Um, I think that was more of an administrative, um, you know, taking the input from the board meeting tonight. Um, and and Robert, you know, we could have Andres. Um, label those differently, you know, to have the number five um, locker room and, and we'll assign those and juggle those accordingly, you know, based on Connie um, arranging the schedules and the, the rentals and things of that nature. So um, I think that's something that we get, that we'll handle as part of this process. So I think, I think you clarified your own queries. All right, good. Good discussion. Okay, so we had a, a motion and a second. Are we prepared to vote as a board? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Heather Carmona. Yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Sam Graham. Yes. Ross Kaplan. Yes. Ellie Noble. Yes. Dominic Fulip. Felice, sorry. Um, yes. John Rushi. Yes. Thank you. Great, thank you everyone. And thank yep. you to all of the people on the call. You're welcome to stay if you wanna to continue to, to follow our meeting, but we thank you again for your, your involvement and your input. Okay, the next item on the agenda uh, we have for discussion is the uh, subcommittee report of the February 24th uh, meeting of the Capital Project Subcommittee. And we have a great report in our packet here. 
and both Susan, John, and myself. John, did you want to present sure. this? Sure, I'll, I'll just make a few comments regarding it. I, I'm not, I won't go through it word for word, but um, we did talk about the ice area arena construction and we've just gone through it in great detail, so we won't touch on that. The other thing we spoke about was ice arena revenue. And I think um, also in our packet, there's a, a few pages later, a document from the downtown a magazine that commented on a January 11th meeting where Robert presented um, in front of the city commission. And I think Robert is trying to be um, very conservative in notions of will we make money at the relative to these newer additions. And I think just by the tone of this discussion we just had today, I think we would all agree that it's sure likely that we're no longer going to actually lose, you know, we won't be running the ice rink at, at a deficit. In fact, there'll, like, there'll be a, a surplus. And that was the gist of our ice arena revenue conversation is to just, I think we need to sort of change the conversation from we're, we're gonna, because we've lost money or we've run a deficit for the past several years, that doesn't mean we're gonna run a deficit in the future and in all likelihood we won't. But it's like any forecast, nobody can say that if that's correct or not. But I think just by the gist of this conversation, um, I think we'll probably realize a surplus. And then the other part of that is folks who say, gee, this arena serves non-residents and they're not paying their way. Well, the fact that we we are breaking even obviously the the non-residents must be paying their way or we wouldn't be breaking even so i think that that's that's the gist of what we we discussed the other uh the next item was the revenue and expenditure report that um uh, lauren and staff are working with the finance department uh to um create and I think that's on the next in our packet. That's the next couple of pages. Um, and I think key to, to this is the notion that at the top, it shows that the fiscal year for the for Birmingham, or at least the ACE arena, is January, I'm sorry, July 1st through June 30th. And um, just for example, with that piece of information, you would know that, uh, let's say the report from February, February is 66% of the fiscal year. And so when you look at these numbers, if you look at the far right and you see the percentage of budget used, um, now this is such a weird year that none of these percentages, the whole budget doesn't make much sense this year. But you can go down, quickly go down the percentage of budget used. And if it's under 66%, you know you're under budget. And if it's over 66%, you know you're over budget. And then you can use that same formula if you wanted to. You could look at the, like, let's say the amended budget, multiply it by 66%, and you would see that the year to date balance, um, uh, you can calculate whether the year-to-date balance is on track or not. So um, if, if anybody wants to go into that in more detail, I'd be happy to do it at, at some point. But I think we're, we're headed toward creating a budget that will be released, a budget report that will be released every month that will allow people to track where we stand um, regarding the ice rink revenue. Um, we also discussed that um, this coming Monday, March 8th at 6 p.m., there's going to be a city commission workshop. And I think Lauren said it's going to touch heavily on the enterprise fund thing, which I don't understand at all. So I'm looking forward to that meeting to learn what an enterprise fund is and how it might affect us. And uh, so I, I, I'll certainly be there. Um, on Zoom on March 8th. And I guess I'd encourage the our fellow board members to also participate or listen in at least. Um, 
we don't have a speaking part uh, at this meeting, but, uh, but certainly our involvement in demonstrating that we're engaged is worthwhile. Um, next, we, we discussed uh, Adams Park. And um, uh, on February 8th, the City Commission approved Michael uh, Dolan Associates. Uh, the kickoff meeting um, was on, or will be tomorrow, March 3rd, uh, and they'll discuss engaging the stakeholders, in, including Roper School. Uh, given the need for the lengthy public engagement process, the plan is to begin construction in the spring or summer of next year. Uh, pickleball. Uh, during the January 23rd Commission or Long Range Planning meeting, it was asked if it could be moved up more quickly. And I think, again, I think to accommodate uh, the uh, public discussion that needs to take place and so on, it's probably going to be the summer of 2022 that we actually have pickleball. Um, and then there's this bang the table. At the February 8th meeting, the City Commission authorized the purchase of an annual license for Bang the Table. It's public engagement software, and uh, we expressed the desire for the, now, I don't think any of us know in detail how this works, but we sure would be happy if the Ice Arena, Adams Park, and Pickleball became early users of this software. So I, I think that that wrap ups my comments. Thank you, Heather. Right. Thank you, everybody. Right, John, thank you. Good summary. All right, any comments from any members of the board? Okay. If not, we will um, move on to the finance report for the ICE Arena that John had mentioned with those fiscal year modifications. Thank you, Warren. My Did pleasure. Yeah, I think Jen touched on the next couple items, but um, yep. if the board has any questions on item number two, um, we're hoping that this would be a, a regimen in the schedule on the agenda for um, your viewing revenue and expenditures of the arena. And um, we'll keep this uh, in front of the capital project subcommittee too, in case there's any other items that we need to report on um, as the, and particularly after the development of the, of the, the new and improved ice arena, there may be some other things we could highlight um, going forward. So this will be, I think, ever ever changing. Um, so this is actual financial um, uh, revenue expenditures. Um, and I just note too, and not every month is it going to be perfect. Where you could, uh, some things are, are expensed sooner than others. Some are some revenue are counted differently. So. It's, um, it's whenever they get entered in up at uh, City Hall under the Finance Department. So that's why we wanted to keep it official uh, reporting and recording of our ice arena uh, ins and outs, if you will. So it's, um, it's, it's, you're going to have questions, I'm sure, from time to time. And, and we'll give you updates um, based on those. So Great. Okay, the next item John had mentioned and we touched on a little bit. Um, I know a few members of the board here are planning to attend the uh, workshop meeting on the 8th. Uh, Pam, you had a question? Can I just ask one question? I, I appreciate the financial report of the ICE Arena, and I think that's really good going forward. Um, I don't know or haven't studied all the details about the expenditures, especially those under salary, but I was, I'm somewhat interested to know why there are overtime expenses in this unusual year and that those aren't even prorated at the level, let's say that the salaries and wages, which are much lower than um, than budgeted, but overtime isn't proportionately lower. And so I'm just curious why there are overtime uh, expenses when the rink is mostly closed, ha was mostly closed during this reporting period. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can we can look into that, Pam, for a legend and let everyone know. That's fine. All right. Are there any other comments in regarding um, the Birmingham City Commission uh, workshop? We have a memo here that outlines the intent and the process, which is very helpful. It was great to see those guidelines. Um, 
And I think we will all be observant of the outcome of that as we move forward in the process and then how we likely will be using the workshops for other subsequent projects as well. So I think this is a good start to that process. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the update on the portable toilets and park shelters. I know this is a question that we talked about at the board level. Uh, Lauren or Carrie, do you have an update for that? I'm not sure who's introducing that. Yeah, Connie, Connie's going to yeah. handle this for us. Yep, oh, I'm, Connie? Okay. I'm actually going to handle it. So um, You're the Porta John gal too? <laughs> I am the Porta John gal. So the Porta Johns, um, we place them out at 10 of our city of Birmingham parks. Um, we've been doing this since 2005. Um, there's a couple of the parks that we, like for instance, we put two at, which is Poppleton, because of the distance from the diamond to the play equipment. Uh, they are installed mid-May and we pull them out the last of October. This year we did have three remain for the winter months at Barnum Booth and Crestview. Uh, they are installed in proximity of the roadway and sidewalk so the vendor can maintain them. We tried to hide them in natural resources such as trees or shrubs. Uh, the department has dis discussed screening what will be discussed further as the parks are redeveloped. We also provide uh, portable toilets for the in the park concert series that are held in Shane Park in the summer. Uh, they're put out the day before and then removed the day after the concert. In regards to the park shelters, in the current park and recreation master plan starting on page 84, there is a five-year capital improvement plan that's listed. Installation of park shelters are called out, which will be determined. Um, the installation of a park shelter are conceptual and are subject to change based on uh, actual funding sources. So at future Parks and Recreation Board meetings, uh, the staff will share that with the recreation items that are on the table eight five-year capital improvement plan. So basically for the shelters, they're There'll be projects that move from a conceptual plate phase to a design and funding phase once a park is redesigned. So that's my uh, story on the restrooms and the park shelters. Any questions from members of the board? Pam? Uh, they're not, I noticed that the, the they're not ADA compliant shelters is that i mean um restrooms and there are some available i've seen them at other venues is that something that was considered or has been a part of any community discussion yeah we've had had we've had put an ada um at our in the park concert series and also at booth park um we are going out for quotes this year and we're requesting that ada is one of the requirements and also if i may add we are um looking at extending our season a bit too potentially we take I, I know that there's the entrance to to um uh booth park will be is one of the first projects and that portable toilet is right up front and i forget if is it part of the the plan will it remain there or be relocated um as part of that park development we will consider a more permanent restroom at booth park as we're designing so yes, it will not only be relocated, it will be um, more of a permanent structure, potentially. Okay. Great, any other comments? Not, we will move on to two other items. As John mentioned, we have a couple articles that were mentioned for our review that mentioned the status of the ice arena and the capital projects, the bond priority list. We will move on to the next item if there are no other comments on those. We will move on to unfinished business. Any items of unfinished business? Susan? Um. I just want to go back to what Pam had brought up about the locker rooms. I think it's a, a really good point. I personally was putting together a document just to put my notes together for the arena, and it just sticks out and it sticks out wrong for many, many different reasons. And I, I do understand that, you know, hockey, they consider it the, the girls um, locker room, but I don't know where we take this, but I think we do need to come up with a different name for that. And, 
you know, maybe it's a primary, I don't know, but I think that's something that we need to put on our agenda or to work on, or maybe it's a subcommittee since that's, we're working on that or figure out what to call that other locker room because it sounds wrong to me on many different levels. So I, I want to make sure I understand. So I think Lauren addressed that with Robert of how in the plan right now you're going to just remove women's, but are you suggesting something different, Susan? No, no, not at all. What we call it, what we name it. Like there is a need for in a figure skating thing, you know, to have a male locker room. Um, you can't really say male and female these days because there might be something else out there, right? And so I, I think that what we're doing with it is fantastic. I just think we need to find some verbiage for it. And I think what we're calling it is, is really the question I have. Because a girls' locker room, um, from a figure skating standpoint, I feel like the figure skating team is really not using those locker rooms very much, so it's not a huge issue. But I understand Josh's comment. Like, why is there this little tiny room for the figure skaters and all this for the hockeys, you know? And so from there, it feels not right. From um, um, gender status these days, it doesn't feel like the right term. And so I, I don't know how we do that. And, you know, maybe we need to talk to someone, but I think we need to come up with another term of boys' locker rooms, teeny tiny little girls' locker room. And, um, so it's the term boys and girls, and it's just the perception of teeny tiny little girls locker room because other people do use it. The figure skating teams use it, the club uses it, the high school team uses them. And so I, I just think that Pam had a good point. I don't think we need to change anything about the design, but what are we gonna call it? That, maybe that's for the subcommittee. I just wanted to bring that up as something I think that needs to be addressed. Lauren, I think, is this a subcommittee related issue? No, if I could just address, um, I, I think it's, uh, it was well documented tonight and also staff, we raised those same questions um, uh, during, uh, prior to and during the design development stages with regard to the size, the um, perception, uh, various things. So Robert uh, has already sent an email out to Andrews Architecture to change the labeling of that before the design goes out to um, our departments and out to the RFP. It's good. We have lock room number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Um, so that covers the labeling and of course uh, assignment to locker rooms are going to be interchangeable and, and be modified in different user groups depending on the events. So that will all be managed, obviously, by internal operation. And I think you, you've touched everything beautiful tonight with that. And um, I appreciate the comments. So I hope that, I hope that addresses uh, some concern. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. That's great. Great. Thanks. Uh, I, that's great. Uh, Pam? I, I hate to make more comments about bathrooms, but maybe they're important. Um, it, since the... Um, uh, bathrooms in the lobby aren't being reconfigured. I'm, I'm not memorizing the plan, but is there a, um, a family restroom or, or a restroom, you know, yeah, like the family ones at the, at the um, a unisex restroom, whatever. Is there some other way where parents uh, wanting to care for children don't have to bring them into the other room or what, what is current thinking about that in public spaces? And is that something to be accommodated? changing areas. <laughs> Tanya, what are you finding with that now? I don't we have, currently we have changing tables in both the men's and women's bathroom. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just saying where my screen just went blank for a second. Sorry about that. Ann, you, you had your hand up again? Um, yeah, I want to say hi to Pam's dog. Uh, and <laughs> I wanted to know um, the the Zoom instructions for the workshop. Will those be up on the city commission website soon? I, I don't see. There's no virtual meeting notice up yet, and I don't know if it was going to be on the city commission page or if it would be on our. I know we have a special page, uh, a special web web page regarding the rink renovations. Um, 
but I'm just going to want to be able to share those with with interested people I know who might want to join the workshop. Great point. We want to make sure people are aware and accessible. I think it's ahead of the agenda, the city commission agendas, correct? It's on that same notice. Well, I'm. Hmm. I'm not looking at the website right now, so Ash, I don't know. Anne, could you repeat what you asked again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, where will the public be able to find the Zoom instructions to participate in the workshop? I'm I'm on the city commission or right. the city commission page right now, and I don't see a virtual meeting notice up yet. I I, I don't know if that's where it's going to be. You know, later this week maybe. Right. Um, it will be. It, yeah. It's going to be there. Yeah. So it. They're going to treat the clerk's office. We'll be posting the agenda like typical right. uh, typical for a city commission meeting. I understand it's going to be the same uh, ID or same uh, access, same Zoom ID number as the normal commission, the regular commission meeting. Okay. And so both will be posted. Uh, I believe she'll do it all together on Thursday when they when she gets up the normal agenda. Okay. That is correct. The the Zoom information is identical to the commission meeting because it happens just before and then runs into the commission meeting. So it's the same, uh, it's the same Zoom code, same thing, it just starts at 6.30 instead of 7.30. Um, and it will be posted just like any normal, um, uh, any normal meeting. It just will put, be posted at starting at 6.30 for six, this. Sorry, and 6 seven, p.m. 6, 6 p.m., yeah. you're right, 6 p.m., not 6.30. 6 p.m. for this and 7.30 for the standard commission meeting. Okay. Immediately Thank following. Okay. All right, any other items of unfinished business? All right, we will move on to the next item on the agenda. Any new business for the board to consider? All right, seeing or hearing none, we will open to the public for any other items not on the agenda. I don't know. Maybe I don't think yep. he dropped. No, I, I raised my hand. Uh, I wanted I wanted to address uh, John Rushi's uh, comment on uh, bang the table. Um, oh, sure. That that software package is going to be available to any of the department heads um, to be able to bring information forward for any of their boards. So we are hoping that this will be used by the boards by the departments. Um, it's going to be open for any of the departments in the city, um, and I'm, I'm sure that they will be incorporating board uh, projects as well as the park project, I, I believe was one of the things they wanted to talk about in that. Um, right now, we are looking at probably April before getting that fully live, um, but it is, uh, it is in the works, and it will be used by, uh, available for use by all the departments and boards in the city. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Sarah. All right. Any other items not on the agenda? Any board? Any other public would like to address the board tonight? All right. Seeing none, we will close out our meeting. Our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, April 6th. Thank you, everyone. And have a good night. Thank you, Heather. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.